she wake up? I don't want to. Hey everyone, how you doing? Ah, just slammed my hand on the corner. <laughs> I haven't filmed in so long. Ah! Today we're going to be finally doing a part two of our Girl Talk TMI tag. I'm also going to be playing with some new makeup today that I received in PR. We got this new Laura Mercier which is a powder but it's like a little hint of rose to kind of give like a light pink under eye. I know that that's been kind of like trending, trending on TikTok a lot. I kind of owe you guys a little bit of an explanation here I feel like. So where have I been? Well, I have been been honestly spending a lot of my time focusing on creating TikToks, on creating Instagram Reels, and honestly, like, I've been kind of feeling a little bit disconnected from YouTube just in general lately because I feel like there's so much pressure to be a content creator these days and create multiple forms of content for all these different platforms and sometimes it's really easy to get burnt out especially if you're someone that cares a lot about the numbers I'm trying to stop that trying it's a lot harder than it looks but I promise I'm gonna get back into YouTube and I think I'm just gonna be doing everything a lot different this time around I think I'm gonna be focusing a lot more on things that I want to film and what makes me happy rather than feeling like this is a job for me, right? Because I started YouTube and I was having so much fun and I feel like I recently fell out of love with it. So I'm kind of on my journey to fall back in love with YouTube and just creating content on this platform. And I just want to say thank you guys for being so patient with me and I'm sorry that I haven't been uploading as much. I honestly am really not the type of person that can get on camera and fake it these days. I've been creating YouTube content for like six, seven years now. You guys know me pretty damn well that if I come on camera and I act like, if I have to force myself to act a certain way, you're gonna know. And I don't wanna do that. Like I just wanna be raw, real myself. And I honestly think I let myself get too much in my head. And basically I'm rambling on and telling you guys that I am gonna be doing a bunch of different content and I'm gonna try to be more consistent with my content and I just wanna say thank you for bearing, 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 bearing with me? All right, so without further ado, let's get into these girl talk questions and let's do our makeup. So I have screenshotted a lot, a lot, a lot of your guys' questions. I actually used a different app this time around. It's that like, I don't know, what is it called? It's the NGL app. Oh my God, I'm so tired tired of these f***ing spam callers. Block. Block. You're f***ing blocked. And this way it was like very easy to keep things anonymous this time around because I know like a lot of people always worry like please don't show my name when you when you do these kind of questions. So it's cool that I was able to keep things anonymous. Let's get ready to do our brows. I gotta remember like feel like I forgot how to do YouTube these days. I got my brows laminated. I was very unhinged with my scissors when I was trimming my brows and I trimmed way too much on my left side of my brow. The right brow is looking okay, but like I think I need to just put the scissors down. A little life update about me is I recently went in for a second breast reduction and re actually revision this time around because I did not heal great from my first breast reduction. My right nipple suffered a little bit of necrosis, which is like very rancid looking. Like I, I don't even know. I want to show you guys, but I don't don't know how to show you guys. <laughs> also, my boobs were two different sizes and that really was aggravating to me, so I wanted to fix that. Like, the part of the reason why I got a breast reduction um, in the first place was so that I could fit in bras correctly, you know, so that was definitely a frustration of mine. And also, I wanted to have another lift. My boobs have already fallen from a lift, so let's go in with our brows. I'm using this new Benefit brow product. I really like it. It's called Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil. I like it because it doesn't feel like a regular pencil. It kind of feels like a powder pencil texture. You don't have to press hard, and I like that because it's easier to control 
control when you don't have to press hard while using a brow product. Oh, and by the way, like if you're a family member watching this, like click away. I'm talking about things like sex. And also like if you're nosy and you wanna listen, this it's on you then, sorry. Like you're gonna hear very specific details of things. So the first question is, how many times a week do you and Riley have sex? How much do you think is normal for everyone? So I think for Riley and I, like it really varies, you know? Like we've had to take it, well I've had to take it easy with surgery, but ultimately I feel like it's like, three or four times a week. Like, I don't know, like it really just depends and I don't necessarily think that there is a right or wrong answer here. Like, I think it really is just up to the couple. And honestly, like if you're not happy, like the biggest thing that I've realized in relationships is like if you're not happy with your sex life, with anything in a relationship, you definitely should just communicate it to your partner. I feel like nothing good is ever gonna come out of like just worrying so I think like being open and honest with your partner is like the most important thing I'm not sure if I've like told you guys here on YouTube but I know that I've talked about it a lot on my TikTok and Instagram stories that I just got diagnosed in the beginning of the year with perioral dermatitis so now whenever I try any new product whether it be skincare makeup whatever I always go in before with the tower 28 SOS spray let me tell you this is literal liquid gold if you have perioral dermatitis or eczema or anything like that they actually are accepted by the National Eczema Society like they're like one of the only brands that's like accepted by them that their products are great for people that have sensitive skin have eczema have dermatitis whatever it may be so this is amazing I call this my secret weapon it literally keeps my face regulated from breaking out or having any sensitivity problems like it literally has saved my skin from perioral dermatitis so I always start off first with that and then I really keep my makeup prep simple these days I just go in with the SOS spray and then I follow it up with the Tatcha Indigo Cream I have been such a big fan of this product for years my skin absolutely loves it it's also great for people who have sensitive skin have eczema problems like there's like I think an ingredient in it that I want to say it's like an oatmeal ingredient don't quote me on that though but I know it's got really great soothing ingredients in it I know it can run a little bit pricey but Honestly, like it's been one of the only moisturizers that has been the most consistent with me and my skin So that's why I really use it a lot and I really love it Also, I'm gonna be linking all of the products that I'm using down below for you guys as well Not much has changed with my eyeshadow base. I've just been using the NARS soft matte complete one I love it. I think it's great for eyeshadow and it's also great for concealer if you're looking for a good concealer Let's take a look at the next question. Am I on birth control yeah I am and I definitely am one of those people that really needed to be on birth control because when I first got my period I was very inconsistent with like not getting it every single month and once I got older like 18 ish like 17 18 it started to become more regular but it was very weird like there were still some months where I'm, I might have not gotten it or it was like 42 days rather than like like 28 days or like it was 38 days so I went on birth control right when I went to college me and my mom have always had a very upfront relationship like she's known that I've taken plan B before she helped me get my birth control like and at the time like I just like I was like I'm going to college like I'm definitely gonna be sexually active hello and um, I want to be safe my mom was very cool about it like my mom has always been very cool always been very open I've always felt like I could talk to her about anything which has always been something that I'm very grateful for with my mom so yeah I am on be Yaz. I've never had a problem with it I love it I absolutely adore it but I also just want to stress how important it is to because I know that there are a lot of apps these days that allow you to obtain birth control and it's amazing but I still want to stress that if you have insurance and which is 
ridiculous that I even have to say that don't even get me started please go to a gynecologist like just because you are on birth control does not mean that you can skip the gynecologist so I just want to really reiterate that oh my god my air conditioner is like blowing in my eyes and it's making my eyes water the next question is do you get UTIs or yeast infections often um yeah I used to especially when I was in college I would get like UTIs like it was my my f job <laughs> like it was like come on by the way I can't believe I'm gonna say this but I have really been digging cool tones lately so we're gonna be using the stone cold Fox from ColourPop and I like it a lot because it's got a lot of cool tones but there are also like a lot of transition shades and colors that you can use to really blend out the cool tones and I do have a discount affiliate code with ColourPop it's an ICOL at the checkout oh my god this is gonna be a little rancid but I honestly think it had to do with the fact that like I didn't know like back in the day like I'm the oldest sister right so like I didn't know back in the day that like you have to pee after you have sex like I had no idea that that was a thing and I quickly realized that in college so yeah that's why think of me as being your guys's big sister here so do that and also I would get yeast infections a lot too but that eventually went away like again I'm gonna reiterate going to the gynecologist really has changed my life and it might take you a minute to find one but my girl like she made me feel so comfortable and I think that that's really important and I do think a lot of people get yeast infections and UTIs like I think it's to an, an extent like it's a normal part of adulthood if you're getting them a lot like make sure you are absolutely seeing a doctor getting a urinalysis done and I don't know who the hell I am these days that I'm actually liking cool tones but for all of you that have been wanting me to do cool tones for all these years I hope I'm making you happy <laughs> the next question is what am I the most excited about for my wedding I'm just so excited to see Riley and I's vision come to life and like having friends and family there to celebrate with us like that to me is the most important thing and the most like exciting thing like I'm very excited to also go dress shopping and like you know do makeup trials and stuff like that I'm, I'm very excited about the whole process Process, honestly but one thing that I wasn't really prepared for is like how many unsolicited opinions that come with getting married and like Riley's not getting anything from anybody everybody's talking to me about it and I'm like oh must be so nice for the groom it's more like I know people don't have malice behind well some people might but like I know majority of it is like oh Jesus I forgot to tap off my brush. I know majority of it is really nice and coming from a good place when I get like a lot of people giving me advice or sending me videos and things like that. I'm talking like I say like I want to have, let's just say I'm thinking about having my bachelorette in Palm Springs and then I get people that are like, no, there's a noise complaint after nine. Like you have to be in the house. There's nothing to do there. And I'm just like, yo, this is my batch, not yours. Like I don't give a what you think about it, you know? Just like that kind of stuff has been really pissing me off and like I get really overwhelmed with like people sending me ideas cause I'm like, yo, we got a year, over a year for this wedding. Like October of next year, late next, late October. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I just kind of am like, let me enjoy being engaged right now. And also like I've wanted to get married as young as I could remember. So it's kind of like, can I plan and my dream wedding with my fiance, please. Thank you so much. I know most people aren't coming from a place of malice. It's just me. Like, I don't like being told what to do in everyday life scenarios. So it's kind of like, it's even more amplified for my wedding day, which is not a great thing. Like, I'm trying to not be like that, but it's also very hard for me. Sagittarius things, fire sign things. The next question is funny. It's like, butt stuff, yes or no? Um... I mean, I'm not gonna lie and say that I haven't ex like obviously experimented with that. Is it my favorite thing in the world? Nah, but it's also kind of like fun every now and then. That's my idea, 
on it. We got a question here about my YouTube videos. Why do you not do as many YouTube videos anymore? Isn't this your source of income? Plus, we miss you. So, honestly, you guys, like, YouTube really, like, hasn't been my main source of income for a while now. Like, yes, I do make money off of YouTube, but it's nowhere near as much as, like, brand deals would be. Like, brand deals is where I feel influencers make the most money. And, of course, like, people that are getting, like, over 300,000 views every video, they're making some nice cash. Like, that's for sure. But, like, I kind of explained this in the beginning of the video, so I'll just briefly touch on it. It's not necessarily that, like, I want to stop doing YouTube. It's more just that I've fallen a little bit out of love with it. And also, in general, beauty is being consumed a lot more on TikTok. And I also like creating a lot more on TikTok when it comes to makeup because I feel like I can let you guys know in 30 seconds, 60 seconds or less if a product is good or not. And I feel like everybody's attention spans has drastically changed since the pandemic and since TikTok has come around. Even mine has. Like, I'll be guilty of watching a YouTube video and I scroll through. I'm like, get to the f***ing point already. I think it's just me kind of like falling more in love with YouTube again and showing you guys more of like my everyday lives, vlogging, shopping hauls. Yes, of course, I can still try out new makeup, but I honestly feel like for me, it performs better on TikTok than it does on YouTube. Now, if you guys want me to bring back some more makeup stuff, I absolutely can. It's just more for me that I've been enjoying creating it more on my TikTok. Okay, this next question is, how do you get in the mood when you don't really feel like it? Tips for intimacy. This is very hard because like I'm a very like sexual person like I Don't necessarily need to get in the mood like or have to like prepare to be in the mood But I also don't want you guys to think that there's anything wrong with you if you're not in the mood Um, Because there's not I also like being on Lexapro that definitely effed a little bit with my my intimacy levels and stuff like that, but I also want to like let you guys know like that's okay um, so tips for intimacy like I would honestly just say like trying new things with your partner or like just in general being open with them about this and like talking again communicating between your partner and you is gonna be the most important thing and that's something I wish I learned earlier when it comes to relationships. I know that there's like some like CBD gummies and things like that that like put you in the mood. Like there's like a whole brand. I can't even remember the brand. But like again, this is something you can definitely talk to your doctor with or your gyno. I'm just taking a brush that doesn't have any additional product on it to just diffuse the edges. You guys have seen me do this a million and one times. Okay, I love this question. Kitty maintenance, best razors, best exfoliators, avoiding bumps is waxing worth it do you get anxiety yada yada well honestly y'all I have never gotten my hooch waxed before I do laser hair removal and I do shave but doing laser hair removal definitely has gotten rid of a lot of ingrown hairs that I used to have problems with that's for sure and also in general I feel like doing laser especially like if you are nervous about waxing like laser does not even hurt like I honestly can tell you like it's not bad at all you could even get one of those at home lasers that's what I use now is an at home laser and it's so easy to do so easy to use mine is called Kenzie and as far as like body washes exfoliants and things like that I use a lot of products from the honey pot which is a, a woman of color owned brand and I love supporting them I just ordered a bunch of things like tampons I get the, my body wash from them I get wipes for down there from them I definitely recommend checking them out they're awesome oh I love love this question. At what age did you start Botox? I started at 26. Now I need to go get some more. This is a thing that's preventative, right? So you want to start, like I started at 26. Now I'm not telling you guys to start at 26, 
but because it is supposed to be like a preventative treatment, I personally feel like 26 was a good age for me. Now, does that mean it's a good age for everyone? Absolutely not. But now that I'm about to be 30 in December, I think I'm going to be way more strict with it, more on top with it, because I do kind of let, obviously you guys can see, like I do let it go a little bit. So, you know, I do think I'm going to be definitely more on my Botox game from my 30th birthday on, which is like crazy because I'm really struggling with the fact that I am going to be 30. Like, I feel like I've always been really scared of aging and I know it's a blessing to age. I know it's a privilege to age and I know like everybody keeps telling me that the best years of their lives are in their 30s and like for me, I feel like my 20s were such a great age for me that it's kind of like how the f our 30s gonna top it, but that's okay. You know, like I'm just trying to be optimistic about it. And also I feel like society in general really, really with women and like they make you feel like men age gracefully and salt and pepper is gorgeous but like girls if there's a little fucking wrinkle or a little gray somewhere forget it we're old hags right like I just I think society has effed me up a lot in the head with aging I mean who ha what has in society done to my self-esteem, you know what I mean? That's why I always like to be honest and real and open with you guys about getting procedures done, like my breast reduction, Botox, fillers, like things like that. Like I will always be open with you guys because I never want anybody to think that I'm like just natural when like I'm not, you know what I mean? Like I have access to some of the like best skincare, best dermatologists, like I'm very lucky, right? So I just want to make that very clear to y'all. I don't want to add to the pressure that society puts on women and beauty standards in general because it's not just women either. I don't really want to do a liner. I haven't been wearing much liner these days. What I'm gonna do though is just mark really close to my waterline with black. I'm using this Sigma E64 brush to do so and I'm basically just like you see that? It's just like a little stamping technique. That way when I apply lashes, it just looks more seamless, you know? And I'm staying as low as I can, so like that's pretty low. Oh, a lot of you guys were asking how my voice is doing, and it's okay, like I still need to get that surgery done, and I kind of am putting it off as much as I can. So you guys might hear a little bit of raspiness, but like whatever at this point, you know? Let's do these Lily Lashes Half Lash she came out with. This is in the style Sack. Cause I'm feeling a little sassy. What was your first time like? I think I might have asked, answered this on the first one, but it was honestly very nice. Like I had a very nice first time. It was with a boyfriend that I had really liked and was dating and for a while and I really liked him and it was great. Like honestly, it was great. And then like, I also like had an incident where like the condom broke. This was, I don't think it was my first time. It definitely wasn't my first time, but there was a time where I had had a condom break and I did take plan B and that <laughs> killed like my period the next time after that was <gasps> it was really something do you ever get depressed or anxiety on your period yeah yeah I'm on it now and I'm pretty sure yesterday I was feeling the most depressed I'd ever felt in like the last year and a half. Like I literally was like emo mode and I get so much more depressed, so much more angry, so much more anxious on my period. And it's just so crazy to me that like we are expected to just like go on with on without our days, about our days with just having our period bleeding and experiencing severe mood swings. Like that's just so unhinged. So I'm just going in and prepping my lashes. Oh God, I just poked myself in the freaking eye. But I'm just going in and putting some mascara on my lashes. I'm using Tarte Lash Glue. I really love their lash glue, it's great. And it doesn't like, I don't know, it doesn't have like that latexy feeling on it. Like I hate that. This is what the lash looks like. It's like cute little, cute little half lash. Wow, that applied so easily. It's really nice. A nice subtle difference, like just a little bit wispier, you know? Okay, so this looks pretty, I gotta, we gotta fix this guy, but we'll come back to her at the end. Let's move on to our face. I have a great combination that I've been doing a lot lately, and that is mixing the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter with the Dior Forever Skin Glow. These two together are like a dewy skin dream. They are a dry bitch's dream, okay? Like, I love these two together, so that's what I've been doing 
doing and I'm gonna mix it on the back of my hand and let's move on to our next question oh okay this question do you hang out with other beauty influencers how come I don't see you with others I gotta tell you guys and I think I've been open about this before but you know growing up I didn't really have one solid friend group I was kind of friends with everybody but because of that it made me feel left out a lot because I wasn't always like thought of immediately to be invited to things and whatever so just so you guys know like I do have some past teenage trauma about that that I am currently working on with my therapist so this question can sometimes be triggering to me if I'm gonna be honest but I know it's not coming from a bad place it's just curiosity I honestly can say I don't have problems with really anybody in this industry I've always tried to support everyone I've always tried to get along with everyone and I really do genuinely enjoy being friendly with everyone I've always loved hanging out with people being on brand trips etc like I will say that there are some inconsistencies in the industry where like I feel like I'm friendly and really good friends with some people and then sometimes I'll get invited to things but sometimes I won't get invited to things and you know I think that that's also why sometimes LA gets its reputation of feeling like lonely or fake and you know I'm not gonna say that that's all of LA like I absolutely love living in LA and like once you find your tribe your circle like it really is like a great place and I just feel like for me like I'm friends with everyone you know and just like yeah I mean that's really it you know and also sometimes like I'll hang out with people but I don't necessarily like post it because like it's not like I'm hanging out with people to like post about it and be like yay we're friends like and I also have a lot of friends that aren't in the industry because I do think that that's severely important you don't want to be surrounded by just like a bunch of yes men all the time like you want to have friends outside of your work like if you think about it this this is like my career, right? So like other influencers are my coworkers. But like I do definitely get along with like every single person and I like to be invited to things. Sometimes I'm not always invited and sometimes when I get questions like this it can really F with my self esteem because I'm like oh my god did I do something wrong? Like does this person not like me or whatever but honestly I, again, I don't have problems with anyone. I try to be friendly with every single person and you know, it is what it is like at the end of the day. I can't let things affect me in the way that they used to, especially like since this is something that I've been dealing with for such a long time. And also like let this be a lesson to you guys as well. Like you don't ever want to have to chase after being friends with someone. You want to have friendships that are true and real and reciprocated and make you feel like worthy you know what I mean I love this foundation so much it's so good so we're gonna clean up my eyeshadow as well like once we add powder we're gonna dust off the edges ooh what's something you just like about putting your life online oh there are a pretty decent amount of things and again like I know this doesn't come from a place of malice but it doesn't make me feel good is like if I just post a photo on my story right and you can see some of my stretch marks or whatever it may be oh my god my foundation is so much lighter than the rest of my body <sighs> just ignore that just ignore that if I just post a photo and you can see a little bit of a stretch mark or my stomach has a little roll or whatever like people pointing it out and being like oh my god I love your stretch marks or like oh my god like you know you showing your stretch marks like that's so brave of you and it's just like well I mean it's not really like I was just taking a photo it's not like I was doing it to highlight it so I think that that is like the thing that gets the most difficult for me especially because I used to have anorexia and I have body dysmorphia so you know that that part of being online for me is difficult like even just on my recent post on YouTube on the YouTube shorts of me wearing the viral skims dress and I got an extra small in it people were like calling me fat in that video and like it was very very weird like I'm very happy that I'm in a good place mentally where comments like that don't really upset me as much anymore or don't make me spiral as much but like it definitely is triggering like don't get me wrong so I think that that's probably the biggest 
thing about being online that I am still struggling with. This next question says, I'm 28, nearly 29, scared of dying alone, but don't want to meet someone online, but that seems to be the only way now. I know, like, I don't know firsthand how dating, how difficult dating is right now post life after a pandemic, because like I met Riley before the pandemic, but I know from like other friends of mine how difficult it can be to like put yourself out there and do things like that and not want to have to meet people online so my best advice to you is to go out a little bit more whether that be going out and doing like a hobby whether it be going to the park whether it being taking up a new hobby like ceramics or you never know where or who you're gonna meet people but I also want to like let you guys know like once you stop looking for a person is when life kind of throws a person your way because I was not looking for Riley when I found him. You know what I mean? Like I was not looking for love. I just so happened to find him while I was skiing and he was my ski instructor. So I honestly recommend like if you don't want to meet people online and listen, I, I feel like meeting people online is like, I did the whole Tinder thing before I met Riley and all that stuff. And like, it's just not, I get it. Like I totally get, I get it. So I do feel like putting yourself out there more in regards to like going out, finding new hobbies, going to a park, you know, just like doing things like that, I think is a great way to meet people. But again, I know that that is easier said than done. I couldn't think of the expression. This is no new news, the Rare Beauty Contour Stick I absolutely love. And I've been applying it like pretty high up on my cheekbones. When I blend, I do like a tapping motion and I tap down, I tap up, and that's kind of how I've been doing it lately. I don't drag the brush across my face because I find that it will take off the product and will take off my foundation, so this is what I do. And whatever is left on the brush, I kind of just tap on my forehead and same thing over here. All right, let's look at the next question while I'm doing this. Oh my God, left-handed. Have you and Riley ever had a really bad patch? You guys always seem to get along. Uh, yeah, we have. When we first moved into my house together, that was a really, really difficult time for us in our relationship. And just in general, the way that like I communicate is very different from the way that Riley communicates. I come from a family where things are kind of just said, right? Like if you don't like something, if you don't do something, whatever, like my family, I've always grown up like just being completely honest and upfront. And sometimes my tone could be a little bit like bitchy, you know what I mean? So like I definitely have worked on that. I've worked on my delivery with things, but I think the biggest rough patch Riley and I had was like in October of 2018, if I had to put a specific date to it. And it was honestly because of a really big miscommunication where Riley had like left the house to do something and I felt like he was kind of like not making me a priority in that moment of time when I really needed him. But like I also didn't understand that this thing that he was doing was a priority to him. So you know, it was just a really big misunderstanding we both really wanted our relationship to work so we worked through it and we now we communicate and like am I the best communicator in the world no is Riley the best communicator in the world <laughs> no so you know it's like I think in a relationship you're always gonna be working on yourself and on the relationship and I also think that there's nothing wrong with fighting in a relationship obviously you don't want to be at your thro each other's throats 24 7 but when you're fighting for something, I think that that means that you both care. You know what I'm saying? And also, like, there's nothing wrong with couples therapy. Like, Riley and I are actually considering doing it before we get married just so we can, like, understand each other more and, like, get some marriage counseling. Like, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. And I wish, like, therapy was a little bit more normalized, especially with couples. So, I just want to 
point that out. Oh girl, I'm still this question. How do you set boundaries and remove yourself from unwanted situations without fully isolating yourself? That is something that I struggle with so much because when somebody pisses me off or like when I'm trying to set boundaries, sometimes I can shut down completely and I could be like, nah, I don't wanna talk to you anymore. You piss me off, that's it. And that's something that I'm really trying to stop doing because I know that that's not healthy. Ooh, let's try this new pink setting powder underneath from Laura Mercier. One thing that I've been doing to set boundaries more is like, I feel like because my job is requiring me to be on my phone all the time, and I'm sure you guys are the same way too, like you're on your laptop, you're on your phone, you're talking to customers, whoever, whatever. I am making myself less available on my phone because I feel like some people can cross boundaries where they know that I'm working on my phone, they know I'll see a, see a text, they know I'll see something. I really am trying to like put my phone down more and become less available to people who I feel like have too much access to me. Or like, I feel like, yo, this isn't appropriate right now. I'm working, I don't wanna talk right now. Like, one thing that I've been doing is like really setting boundaries with my phone. And I know that that could be a little bit more like content creator specific, but I'm one of those people that I feel like if I don't answer a person right away, I'm gonna forget about it. But, or also, I don't want people to think I'm mad at them. But I've been trying to set boundaries in that way. Boundaries are not easy to do so I'm very proud of you for like trying to do some boundaries and realizing that you need to do boundaries and I totally feel you on the isolating thing because I used to do that a lot. The reason you want to set boundaries with people is because you still want them in your life but you don't want them in the light in your life in the way that they are currently doing things. So if anybody has a problem with you setting boundaries, that means that they no longer have access to you in a way that benefits them. So I would just say really trying to come up with something whether it's your phone, whether it's phone calls, whether it's in person, like literally letting people know that hey, this is my boundary, I don't like that. That's important and it's not easy, but I'm proud of you for trying. It's very hard, especially when you're a people pleaser like me. Very, very difficult. I really like this powder a lot actually. And it's their same powder, it's just in a different color. It's in the color rose. Okay, this next question is, are you 100% straight? I actually was just talking about this with Riley and I was like, do you feel like you're 100% straight? And he was like, yeah, I do, but like I could also like live with a guy if needed like and I was kind of like yeah I feel like I'm like 90% straight like I don't know and we were just kind of like getting into this conversation about like How I feel like I don't want to also generalize But like I do feel like a lot more women in my life that I have talked to have definitely said like oh They could be with like other women. I don't necessarily feel like I could be with another woman But like have I kissed other women? Absolutely Absolutely, and it's been nice, like, you know? So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm 90% straight. Like, I don't even, I don't know what that means. I don't know, but yeah, if that makes sense. I don't know, am I even, like, I don't, I don't even know. This question is, where's your own beauty brand at, or are you not into it? Okay, so, like, I don't necessarily know that I would come out with, like, a cosmetics line, and it'd be, like, Nicole Cosmetics. I mean, it wouldn't be that, but, like, you know what I'm saying? I honestly don't feel like that is a journey for me. I find I have a lot more love in the skincare world, in the self-care world, with, like, meditations. Like, I, I want to do some Something that's really me and not me just like slapping my name on a cosmetics brand or a skincare brand for that matter because I can make money off of it. I really want if if I'm gonna have a brand, which I'm I'm really hoping one day too, I really want it to be me. And I have this amazing idea for a skincare product that I really, really want to do. I'm hoping that I can talk about that more with my managers, but I'm so excited that you guys wanna see like a brand from me. Like that's really cool because I know like everybody and their mother has a brand. So it's cool that you guys are interested in that. So thank you for asking that because that makes me feel good. Are there any other surgeries you want? When I have kids, I can really see myself doing a complete like mommy makeover, the whole nine yards, like a tummy tuck if needed, a little liposuction, maybe a little, a little lift. I don't know, I'm very pro you do what you want to your body. I'm very pro you do 
review. I don't have any opinions on anybody's surgeries. I just think it's cool when people are open about it. But again, it's your privacy. You don't have to be open about it, but you guys better trust and believe that I will be open about mine because I want to be open with you guys if I ever were to get anything more done, you know? I would really like a little lipo suck on my like love handles that I'm getting now that I'm getting closer to 30. Again, like I feel like I would just wait till I have kids because I don't want to keep going under and under and under and under and under. And I've heard that liposuction can be very painful. This Benefit blush, by the way, I don't know if I've talked about it before here on YouTube. It's the Butterfly Blush. I love the color, the orange color is so pretty on my skin tone. I really like it. I'm such a big fan of orange blushes. Like, I feel like everybody needs a good orange blush in their makeup kit. Oh, this Jones Road hippie stick, by the way, it's just like a huge makeup bomb. It looks like deodorant, but I love it. It adds such a nice, like, subtle, shine and sheen to the face. I haven't been really liking color highlighters like gold, white, pink. I haven't been doing that, but I do like the little effortless, like, oh, she's got a little glow. That I really do like. I also really like the smell. I love how thoughtful this question is. How to best support someone going through depression and anxiety. My boyfriend has been struggling with it and I wanna be there for him through it. Okay, so here's the biggest thing that I've learned. I also had a boyfriend who had depression and anxiety, but he wasn't doing anything about it and he didn't wanna help him Himself. So number one, what I'm gonna tell you is you cannot help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. That being said, the best way I tell Riley to be there for me, like having my anxiety and depression is not necessarily like giving me advice, but, but just being there to listen is so important. Like I want to be able to complain to you and vent to you without you telling me how to fix it. Like that's the most important thing. And also suggesting like a change of scenery really helps me too like sometimes Riley can say like let's go take the dogs for a walk or like let's go to the backyard let's go hang out back there let's do something like that helps me a lot like not being like cooped up in one area like that helps me out a lot and more than anything is just being there and letting them know that you see them and you hear them for me that's what I need to know is that you hear me you understand where I'm coming from but not necessarily I don't want like a solution from you you know and also like if your boyfriend is in therapy or something like that um, maybe go to a therapy session with him and talk about how you can be there for him or maybe the therapist can suggest ways on how you can be there for him I think that that's probably the best way to go about it what do you think is Riley's sexiest attribute both physically and non physically okay I think physically like oh his face like I just he's so handsome like ridiculously handsome and his eyes definitely pulled me in when we first started talking and non physically he's got such a chill vibe about him that brings me a lot of comfort in days when I'm experiencing no comfort like visit mentally you know like he brings me a lot of comfort and he's always on my side like and even if I do something wrong or F something up, he's very understanding. Like, even if I do something that upsets him, he's very understanding. He's, he's very chill. And I also feel like he's extremely intuitive, even more than he wants to admit. And I like that about him too. I like how in tune he is with his emotions. And I don't mean that in like a crybaby way, by the way. Because I feel like a lot of people could be like, Pisces are crybabies. They're not crybabies. They just are like a little bit sensitive. I I think the crybaby of the Zodiac is actually cancer. Like, as a Cancer Rising, I cry like every f***ing week. And again, there's nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing wrong with being emotional, being in tune with your emotions. There are people out there that don't cry. That's scary to me. Do you put lotion or anything on your, your kitty after a shower? Um, I have, like, from Honey Pot as well, like a little like lotion you can put on down there so I can put it in the link down below for y'all. Would you consider cheating dancing with another guy? 
No, I don't. I might get some hate for this. What's wrong with dancing with another person? You know, like, it's not cheating, but it also really depends on the situation. Like, if I was grinding up on another guy dancing very sexually, I think that would be disrespectful to Riley, and I definitely wouldn't be happy if I saw Riley grinding with another girl, but I don't necessarily think that that's cheating. I think that's just like, what the f are you doing? I feel like cheating is more it's more physical and also like cheating is also like acting on plans like are you making a plan with someone to meet up behind my back why don't you want to tell me about it what are your intentions like like you know what I mean that is more cheating to me I'm gonna put some of that Maybelline mascara on the lower lash should I admit that I watch porn to whenever I start a relationship first of all I don't know like I get a lot of this question a lot I don't think that there's like anything wrong with watching porn. I've never had a problem with any of my significant others watching it. Um, I've even watched it in my day and I don't I don't think that there's really anything wrong with it. Um, if you wanna mention it to your partner, sure. But I also, like, watching porn and being addicted to porn are two very different things. Like again, open communication in a relationship is key. And if you wanna be open about, like, watching porn, then so be it. But I also just like, me, I also just assume in general that like everyone watches porn every now and then. Like, I don't know, what do you guys think? Because I'm not really sure. Like I've always been so nonchalant about it. Oh Jesus. Got some mascara on my nose. We gotta let that dry because if we don't and we just go in and try to smudge it off, it's gonna blend and everywhere. I got this in the nude collection from ColourPop of their lippy sticks. I I have been loving ColourPop's lippy sticks lately. Like, they've been my go-to of what I've been wearing. And also, the um, uh, there's a Rare Beauty lip liner that I've been wearing a lot. It's in my purse right now, but it's called Wise that I'm obsessed with. We're gonna go in with this one from Rare Beauty. It's called Gifted. Also, y'all, don't be like me. I tried to put this Rare Beauty through a pencil sharpener and I started sharpening off the plastic and then I realized it's like, you push it up and down and then you sharpen it. Like, hello, Nicole, what the f are you doing? And the lipstick we're gonna go in with is called Sure Thing from ColourPop. Look at how hydrating that is and juicy. Ooh, I really like this combo. All right, I think we can get this off my nose now. Every time I look in a mirror, I'm like, something's off here. I'm just gonna take my beauty blender and smudge it. All right, let's finish this look off with some Rare Beauty setting spray. It's my favorite setting spray. And we're gonna just use my little mirror here. And we're gonna answer two more questions and then we will be done. Tips on how to make good friends as an adult. Oh my God, that's such a good question. I think like making friends in general is really all about putting yourself out there, right? It's like really being vulnerable in that state. But I would say like honestly doing things like I was saying earlier about meeting people, like trying new hobbies, trying new things. And also I feel like when you're older, your intuition is a lot better on who's a good person and who's not being yourself being normal not trying to like chase after friend groups is the best way to really achieve anything and also like I know even just like setting up like lunch lunch dates to hang out with friends going to lunch going to dinner like making a strong bond in that way this next question says I like this guy and thought he liked me back we kissed and hung out and all that but now he's being weird and ghosty any advice well girl honestly like I, I gotta be honest here like if he's ghosting you even just after like one kiss I think he's done in my books like a relationship should be easy you shouldn't have to like chase after a person or feel like oh my god he's not answering me or texting me back and if it feels that way then he's not it he is not it and you got to put yourself first and put your feelings first know what you deserve and know your worth you deserve to have have someone text you back and not be ghosty and not be flaky. I think 
Honestly, 2022 is all about realizing what your worth is and what you deserve and really riding that wave because we don't have time for people that make us feel like an option when we are a damn priority, okay? Well, damn, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh my God, my hair looks crazy. I let it air dry today and I had it like in a bun so it's a little crazy looking, but thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this part two to a girl talk. And again, all of the makeup products that I use to achieve this look are going to be listed down below for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. I love y'all so much and I will see you next time. Bye.